Hi guys, so today uh, I would like to discuss with you about uh, the log for shell vulnerability. So uh, as a lot of you might be aware, it's one of the worst vulnerabilities that have been discovered like uh, next uh, last week. Uh, and basically, um, I will not discuss too much in detail uh, about uh, what is happening and so on. I will be really quick uh, about that. Uh, what is more interesting for me is does this vulnerability could have been found using fuzzing uh, and that's basically what i'm gonna do i'm gonna write a fuzzing uh, harness uh, for uh, this uh, library that is uh, log for um, e. and uh, i will use um, as a fuzzer i will use a jazer that is uh, the best fuzzer um, to, to fuzz uh, java uh, code so that's basically what we're going to do um, and the main goal will be uh, to see if we can detect this bug if we trigger any vulnerability like in the first second uh, of running uh, and um, if not why uh, we are not able to, to, detect, to detect that. So the vulnerability, the log for shell vulnerability um, is uh, this CV uh, ID so uh, 2021-44-228 uh, and basically what is happening is um, if uh, you are providing some um, arbitrary data uh, and this arbitrary data will be provided um, to the uh, log for uh, g um, package um, if you are providing a particular um, string that is actually what we call a template uh, that will contain some uh, GNE &E, uh, and some other stuff uh, inside. Basically, what will happen is um, log4g will um, interpret this template and the GNE &E, uh, keyword will actually trigger some uh, arbitrary code uh, that will be uh, executed. So it's not just um, we, we are seeing a lot um, an exploit like GNE &E with uh, LDAP, uh, but you can actually do a bunch of other stuff than that. The main idea is just um, if for some reason some arbitrary data can be provided to this um, string uh, without any um, sanitization, um, you can provide an arbitrary template, string template that will actually uh, trigger maybe some downloaded or some um, code that will be executed on uh, another uh, side, like, on, like a, an attacker side and so on. So uh, it's pretty uh, devastating, I would say. So there is already a bunch of uh, analysis that have been done and so on. Uh, especially you also have the video from John Ammon uh, that is really nice uh, regarding like uh, exploiting this vulnerability inside Minecraft. So I, I will invite you to take a look at that. And um, if you can maybe think, uh, is it some, really something that is in the while uh, that's just a, a quick and not really quick overview of all the vendors that actually acknowledge the vulnerability and say okay we are vulnerable to this uh, stuff and so on uh, there is really a lot of them uh, there is some really big name uh, like apple uh, amazon and so on so really a bunch of uh, big corporations that are actually vulnerable to this kind of stuff and the main issue is it's not just you are running java but um, for example if you are using a uh, python and uh, maybe log 4g python stuff maybe under the hood they are using uh, this one uh, and you are not aware so maybe even your python library uh, is actually using this one without you to to know so that's uh, pretty bad so as usual, uh, I'm providing everything you, you need to reproduce uh, Atom. So what we're going to do is um, so target this uh, library. So first of all, we will need to install the fuzzer that we're going to use. It's JZer, so I will let you do that on your side. But basically, uh, I already have everything uh, installed uh, on my side. And then you will need to create some fuzzing harness. So first of all, the first thing you will need to do because you are using a JSER and JSER um, is actually leveraging uh, Maven and uh, Bazel. So first of all, you will need to add the uh, targeting library directly in the uh, maven.bazel. Um, that is uh, the file that is uh, provided right there. So we just need to provide this one. And for the version, we need to provide two 14.1 uh, because the new version is the 2.15.1 uh, if I remember. So this one will be uh, vulnerable. 
then we also need to add a new building target so in that case you just need to add that to the uh, build.bazel so uh, you are providing uh, actually where will be the, the source code of the fuzzing RMS and you are providing the dependency that we're going to need. So let's be quick on that. I will let you uh, just copy path and, and do all the stuff. And that's the fuzzing RMS. So that's a bit more interesting. So let me uh, give you a bit more detail. Basically, uh, it's something really simple. We have the log4g fuzzer. This log4g fuzzer will actually create a logger. Um, so we are using log manager get logger. So we are creating a logger for the current class. And then we have the further test one input. So it's a specific name that is required by a JSR. So we are creating this one. And this um, function uh, is uh, actually taking some data as an input. And uh, this data will actually be the, the arbitrary byte generated by JSR. So uh, then we need to call uh, a vulnerable method. So in that case, we need to do like logger error and we are providing the stuff. So as an example, that's the um, proof of concept to trigger the vulnerability. So as you can see, what is really uh, interesting is the dollar right there. Uh, and basically this uh, stuff is the, the beginning of the template and we have the end of the template right there. And then we have GNDI, uh, LDAP, and after that some, some stuff. So uh, in that case, uh, what will happen is uh, it will try to access to this specific resource using LDAP. So the main goal uh, and what we hope is that the fuzzer will be able to generate some equivalent or at least some uh, stuff that will look like a template and maybe trigger uh, a vulnerability. Um, trigger something that will be catched by him and uh, that we will um, be able to analyze later. Um, so that's the, all the stuff you need. Uh, if you want, you can just copy past the, the files that I'm providing, uh, and that would be more uh, easy for you to, to do. And then we can uh, run the fuzzer. So you can uh, just rebuild the Maven cache using this command line if you are getting any error regarding Maven. And then we can just uh, run the fuzzer. So it's not for gsoup in that case. It's, log, it's for log4g, just some... Uh, stuff from like another tutorial that I've made uh, uh, regarding like fuzzing gsoup if you're interested about that um, and basically what we're gonna do right now is run the fuzzer so we can run that uh, like that uh, Bazel, um, Lisk, Linux, run and we are running the fuzzer uh, but in my case I already have a folder full uh, of stuff already generated so let me just run that uh, like that so if I'm running the stuff, um, I'm getting an error. I need to go in JSR and inside JSR, I already installed everything. So that's okay. So as you can see, what is happening uh, first, so let me just uh, maybe prevent roll. Oh, I don't know where is it, Yeah, whatever. So as you can see, there is a bunch of stuff that are actually generated. So let me stop the further. And uh, you can see that I'm getting some error from a uh, log 4 G, uh, and that's basically because uh, I'm currently logging the stuff, so it's actually the, the expected behavior. So it's a bit noisy, so that's the that's the bad part. But as, as you can see, the JSR is actually generating some some string and some uh, actually interesting uh, input string. JSR is a coverage guided fuzzer, meaning that depending of um, the input, uh, it will uh, retrieve some, uh, some coverage uh, on the target and it will, based on that, generate and mutate some new input and so on. So the more you are running the further, usually the more coverage you will get and uh, the more deep you will go. So the first thing you can see is we are generating some, uh, is really interesting about all those uh, dollars. Uh, and uh, we actually um, we are not saving uh, anything from that. And uh, it seems that we are not triggering any issue. Let me run that again. We are instrumenting the code, and after that, we are fuzzing the, the stuff. Usually, you will not see all of that because basically, um, you will uh, just get like some feedback from the fuzzer and not this input. Uh, but in that case, we are logging everything. Um, let me also run the fuzzer using this command line. And basically, this one will store um, 
all the input files that are interesting will be stored directly uh, locally inside a folder. So that's something really important and interesting, uh, especially if you want to reuse all the unit tests and so on. Um, you will be able to find them inside input log4g. And as you can see, um, I have like six, uh, 672 uh, files uh, directly inside this folder. So there is um, this amount of files that have been considered as interesting by uh, Jazer. So what's the result of what we just uh, done? Um, basically, as you can see, we are not triggering any issue. Uh, we are not triggering any panics. Uh, we are not triggering any, uh, so in case of Java, any exception, an handle exception or even exception uh, that are uh, expected uh, in the code. As you can see, I'm not doing any try uh, catch. So we are not triggering anything. So um, what, what that means is, um, First, it seems that the logger error, the, the method, the function is actually not returning or catching some exception, even I suppose if the parsing is incorrect. So uh, for me, what that means is uh, it's just going to provide that to some, some piece of code and uh, you don't have any feedback regarding uh, what is uh, executed and if it's uh, if it's correct or not i suppose there is a specific grammar regarding like the templating and so on uh, but nothing uh, happened uh, another point is um we have not triggering uh, we have not triggered this vulnerability the lock for shell so for me uh, that's maybe because i don't have the proper um java version i'm using um, open gdk 11 so maybe my version is already uh, fixed or at least not vulnerable not fixed because i'm using the correct version of the library like the, the vulnerable one uh, but um, if i remember some some blog post it seems that um, depending of the version of java that you are using um, there is maybe some some default uh, behaviors that have been uh, cancelled, especially regarding the GN, uh, GNDI uh, stuff. Um, maybe the issue is because we are not generating some good template, um, so that's uh, that could be an issue. So in that case, you can just basically modify the further and see if uh, you are triggering something a bit more interesting. So let me uh, open that. We are inside a log4g, and uh, as you can see right now, I'm uh, generating only ASCII string from uh, with 40 uh, in, the, in the max length. I can perfectly just uh, say I, I want you to generate some string. So we can actually do that, uh, and it will do the job. Let me run the stuff again. So uh, as you will see, we'll generate some really huge screen and uh, even some stuff with some um, specific bytes that are not ASCII and so on. So that's also something really interesting to, to do. Uh, and it will actually even um, increase the coverage and so on because we are providing some, some really interesting data. You can also provide just uh, ASCII screen without providing any length and so on. But uh, if you remember, I told you maybe we are not able to generate this specific pattern and trigger the GNDI stuff. So what we can actually do is actually just uh, do logger error and providing the stuff. And if we want, we can actually even put the data that are generated by the further directly inside and see what is happening. But already, if we are running that like that, um, ideally, uh, I don't have, uh, I mean, this port is not open uh, on, on my host. So I should get like an error, uh, something um, ideally um, I should get like, um, yeah, like an error telling me that he is not able to access this data uh, and so on. So let's uh, run the further again. And basically each time the further will try to execute this stuff. So let's run that. And what you will see is that right there, we have this stuff that have been executed right there. But uh, we don't have any um, any issue that seems to be triggered. We don't have any um, timeout. That is something that could uh, have happened and so on. So for me, that means definitely the logger error or logger whatever stuff um, 
is actually not checking for the result uh, of uh, what he is doing. Um, and in that case, uh, that's a big point uh, when you are doing fuzzing, um, is uh, the detection of any vulnerability. So uh, that's basically why uh, we are often using like sanitizers uh, for C, C++ and even for other language, because sanitizers are there to detect that something is happening and basically they are detecting something is wrong and uh, translating that into like a panic that will be more easy to, to catch for a fuzzer. In the same way, when we are doing differential fuzzing, we are basically comparing um, for the same input to output and if the output are different, we are doing a panic. So we are creating a, a proper crash. In that case, uh, we don't have that and Basically, you don't have any real way to know that something bad can happen. Um, and maybe you can think, okay, you just need to maybe um, um, like create a LDAP uh, endpoint and so on and, and provide some arbitrary uh, data to it and so on and, and verify if something is happening. Uh, yes, but that's already mean that you are maybe aware that something will happen. I mean, if you are just doing fuzzing, you will not um, at all uh, think of uh, a case like this one uh, that have been like silent for, for years. Uh, so no, it's not really like a, a proper uh, method, a proper solution. So we are not finding, uh, finding this uh, log for shell vulnerability because it's really complicated. Um, and you can perfectly compare that to I don't know, like, like SQL injection or any like um, RCE that require some specific string. Um, if you don't have any feedback from the target, uh, like in our case, um, it's complicated to know that something bad is happening uh, under the hood. So I hope it was clear for you. Uh, I really invite you to, to fuzz a bunch of Java uh, code and Java projects that uh, you, you are using. Um, there is maybe definitely some stuff to do with the, the log forges. There is maybe also some other vulnerabilities that are there. Um, and uh, if I remember, there is only like two maintainers, so it could be really maybe useful to help them and support them. Uh, and also, um, don't forget if you can to um, maybe um, even your company can maybe paid uh, uh, to uh, to help develop and maintain some open source software like that. And if you can pay them and help them uh, using money, uh, definitely could be really uh, interesting for you if you want to also learn more about fuzzing, to just implement some fuzzing harness and see if you can find uh, any uh, vulnerability. Uh, I think that's uh, really uh, valuable and it will prevent to have this kind of issue uh, ever again. So I hope you appreciate. As usual, you have um, everything uh, you need uh, directly uh, on uh, my um, Fuzzing Labs Academy. So you have all the code and everything I've showed you uh, right there. So you can just unroll it completely free. And um, that's uh, pretty much all. Let me know what you will like on the next videos. Um, and um, yeah, I hope you appreciate and uh, see you next time.